Hi guys, so today what we'll be covering is study unit 4, which focuses on partnerships, well sole proprietors and partnerships, but today we'll mostly focus on partnerships as the sole proprietor is more or less the same as um, an individual. It has the same allowable deductions, the same fringe benefits, um, all of that. But a partnership is different because you need to divide whatever tax or income you make into um, to the different partners. So that's what we'll be focusing on here. Um, we will also do a question on it. We'll do some questions on a sole proprietor, but um, most of it is knowledge that you should know by now. And that's why I won't focus on that. I'll more focus on partnerships. So let's get going. So firstly, what is a partnership? Now, a partnership is when there is a legal relationship between two or more persons carrying on a business. So each of these persons, they make a contribution to a business, either in the form of money or labor. Um, and they all have the objective of um, a profit ob objective, which needs to be shared between them. So each um, individual partner is liable for their proportionate share of normal tax on the partnership taxable income. And the partnership itself is liable for that on the taxable supplies, on the taxable supplies made by the partnership. So what you need to know about a partnership and what you always need to remember about partnerships is it is two or more members coming together and forming a business. This business, it may have, um, it may be a registered VAT vendor. So on any tax school supplies on that, you may claim VAT. So you should remember that. But also, um, what we need to do is we need, in a partnership, you need to calculate the taxable, the total taxable income of the partnership. And then that taxable income will be divided into each partner um, in their share of the partnership. So, um, and then from there on, you need to calculate the normal taxable income per individual partner. Okay, so a partnership itself is not a company, it's just individuals um, who are in partnership together. Okay. So partnership is, as I mentioned, is not a separate legal persona distinct from individuals. So in other words, a partnership its itself may not legally own assets, and it can be held liable for any obligation incurred. So what that means is the partnership doesn't own the assets, but the individual partners, they own the assets, assets which, they, which they contribute to this partnership. Okay. So there are different types of partnerships. The first being a general partnership. And that's basically where all partners manage the business and are personally liable for its debt. A limited partnership. We've got certain um, partners who are involved in the management of a of this partnership, but um, some of these partners maybe may have a limited liability for its debts, and then also a silent partnership. So that's when um, partners or some partners they share in the profits or losses, but they have no manage. Um, yeah, they've got no involvement in management and their association is generally not publicly known. Okay, so that's just generally types of partnerships that you get, but yeah, it can get much broader, broader than this. Okay, now looking at the normal tax consequences of a partnership and its individual partners. So a partnership itself is not um, liable for, for normal tax, but the individual partners they are liable for normal tax on the partnership tax or income. So as I mentioned before, the partnership, you need to calculate the net profit which the partnership makes. That needs to be distributed proportionally to the partnerships according to their um, share agreement. And then um, for each individual partner, you will have to calculate its, his, um, his or her individual tax liability. Okay. So, um, looking at section 24H2, 
It says, where any trade or business is carried on in partnership, each partner is deemed to be carrying on such trade or business. So that, again, just um, follows on what I just said. In it's the, each of these partners which are deemed to carry on the business and not a partnership itself. So, in, um, so together, they form the partnership. So any income deductions allowances is deemed to be received by or qualified for by each partner according to the ratio um, of their agreement, the share agreement. So in order to calculate the taxable income of a partner, you first need to determine the taxable income of the partnership. And then this taxable income needs to be apportioned according to the um, profit sharing ratio of this partnership um, between you know, of this partnership and then each of these partners they need to pay tax according to his total taxable income so that will include um, the partnership share and also any other share that he might have in other businesses his own personal um, income ex expense or deductions um, or any rebates which, which might be available to him. Remember, you've got your primary, secondary, and tertiary rebates based on your age, um, and also your medical aid credit. Okay. And then an assessed loss. So the important thing on that is a partnership, it may make a um, assessed loss, but this will this assessed loss will also be apportioned among the partners according to their um, profit sharing ratio where each of these partners will then be entitled to set off this assessed loss against any income from sources outside the partnership so what that means is um, yeah he may deduct it if he has more income or if he also if he makes if the individual partner has a, an assessed loss then he may um, carry it over to the next year okay the assessed loss of the partnership needs to be apportioned according to the partners um, according to the partnership profit sharing ratio. Okay, now <clears throat> this is very important is the framework um, in how to calculate the um, the 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 partner's normal tax liability. So I'm going to go through it and then I'll just give you an overview of what you need to know about this. So firstly, what you need to do is you need to calculate the net profit of a partnership. And how you do that is you need to take the income which this partnership earned and you need to subtract any expenses specifically related to this partnership. So income is the gross income from trading the interest received on the credit balance on the bank account. So if you've got a um, positive bank account and you receive interest on that. And any dividends received by the partnership. So if this partnership itself owns shares in a company um, and it received dividends, so that is that forms part of the income of the partnership. Now the expenses relating to the partnership are salaries paid to the employees, salaries paid to the individual partners, contribution, sorry, contributions made to a pension fund. Um, this includes contributions of the partners and its employees, a contribution made to a medical scheme, and again, this includes contributions to of partners and individual and sorry, in normal employees retirement annuity fund contributions made on behalf of the partners. This is when a partnership makes a contribution to a RAF for a partner, any bad debts, life insurance premiums on the lives of partners. So that's, for example, um, if you take any you know, life insurance out on a partner um, for if, if he's a key individual and um, yeah, he might, if he dies or whatever. So we'll cover that a bit later. And then depreciation and also interest paid in respect of partner's capital. So if a um, partner has a negative capital, then um, it will acquire 
um, some interest that needs to be paid and this is forms part of expense for this partnership. So income less your expenses gives you your net profit. Then um, what you need to do is you need to take this net profit and that will guide you into calculating taxable income from the partnership. So you take the net profit as per the statement of comprehensive income. So just a quick note on that net profit and the income and expenses. Those are just um, listed here are just some income and expenses specifically related to partners and partnership, but there are there might also be other expenses or other income. So um, the thing that you just need to do is you just need to calculate the net profit. Um, so if there is, for example, a rental expense for the partner partnership, then this will also be included at, at, as part of the expenses, um, things like that. Okay. So getting back to the taxable income of the partnership. So taking this net profit, you need to adjust this net profit for income expenses that are subject to special rules in the individual partner's hands. So firstly, what we need to do is we're going to have to um, deduct the interest received on a credit balance of um, a positive bank account. So if the partnership received interest, then we need to add it in the um, comprehensive um, income statement. And here, in calculated taxable income, we're going to subtract this. The same is for dividends received by the partnership. We need to subtract whatever dividends a partnership received. I'm going to add back any bad debts, add back contributions to funds not deductible in terms of Section 11 r We're going to deal with that a bit later. Add life insurance premiums on life of the partners, which is not deductible um, in terms of Section 11W. Add back depreciation and subtract, subtract wear and tear in terms of interpretation note 47. Um, that will then give you your adjusted partnership taxable income for the year. Now this needs to be split into the partnership taxable income to three different parts. First, your trade um, income from the partnership. So what income that this partnership made, excluding interest and dividends. Because interest and dividends, we need to um, apportion it separately from your trade income. Okay, and that you see here. So in step two, we need to calculate the partner's pro rata um, taxable income from the partnership. So firstly, we need to take the, so in a partnership, um, they will tell you that this partnership, it's two members or two partners in this partnership and they, they share um, profits equally. So that means each partner has a 50% um, share in this partnership. So what you need to do is for each of these two partners, you're going to um, take this taxable income that you got here and we need to multiply it by the 50% for um, on the taxable income for each of these partners. So partner A, um, he will receive 50% of the taxable income and partner B, 50% of taxable income. Um, might also be we've got a partnership that is 60-40. That means that partner A will get 60% of taxable income and partner B, 40% of taxable income. Okay, that's on the taxable income um, as per the partnership. Same we need to do for the interest income. Um, whatever interest income we calculated here, we need to multiply it by the profit sharing ratio and the same for the dividend income. Okay, and that um, needs to now be broken up to each individual partner and for each individual partner you need to add um, his personal income from the partnership. Okay, so what we've done until now is we've firstly calculated the net profit of the partnership, which will income, initial expenses. Then we need to calculate the tax or income from the partnership. So that's this net profit adjusted for income and expenses. And then we split um, this taxable income according to the pro rata taxable income from the partnership, so according to the profit sharing um, ratio of the partnership. 
and now for each of these partners we're going to individually um, calculate its his taxable income and how we do it we start off by adding the partner's personal income from the partnership so that is a salary which this partner receives from the partnership it's the um, individual interest received from the partnership any contributions to a pension provident retirement annuity fund made by the partnership on behalf of a, a partner and then again um, the same for contributions made to a medical aid scheme paid by the partnership and then any net rental income so if this partner made rental income going to add this back. Then we need to claim exemptions and deductions as per partner. So these exemptions are your interest and dividends. So we need to subtract any interest exemption in terms of section 10.1i and what that tells you is that um, for an individual who is younger than 65 years of age, um, they will have an interest exemption of 23,800 in terms of section 10.1i. And for any individual who is older than 65, he has an interest exemption of 34,500. So these are amounts that you need to know in terms of this section 10.1i. You won't get this in a test. You need to know them. Okay, and the same for dividend exemptions. So dividend exemptions in terms of Section 10 1K states that any South African dividends are exempt. Okay, then that then gives you your taxable income before specific deductions. So which deductions um, will this partnership um, have? So these should all be added. Sorry, just need to fix this. Oh no, sorry, it's, um, they need to be subtracted, sorry, because um, yeah, what you do is you've got your income from this partner, what this partner received, then any um, exemptions, so these are those exemptions of that 23,800 for interest or 34,800 and any SA dividends are exempt and also any deductions um, we need to subtract which this part individual partner may qualify for. So these are any deductions in terms of section 11.8 and 11.E as well as travel costs. So remember 11.E is your wear and tear. Um, this partner may also maybe have a travel allowance. So there's some specific deductions in terms of that. Any bad debts that's um, relating to section 11.I, we may be deduct that. Contributions to a pension fund in terms of section 11 um, K, which this individual partner make uh, um, contributions, which this individual partner makes. Um, it's also subject to certain terms and any donations in terms of section 18 A, and that needs to be complete uh, accompanied with a section 18 A receipt for it to qualify as a donation. Okay, and that thing that gives your taxable income, and then. Um, we just need to take this taxable income and calculate our normal tax liability. And what we do is we need to get the normal tax liability by the partner. So that's according to the tax tables. Less any primary, secondary or tertiary rebates. Less medical aid fees tax credit. That then gives you your normal tax um, payable or receivable for this partner. Now the stepped Step three and four needs to be done for each individual partner. Step one and two, and um, the net profit is on the partnership. Okay, so let's look at, at an example. So for the 2018 year of assessment, Majola and David Medical Practitioners 50-50 partnership. So that means that P. Majola and Mr. K. David shares in the profits at a ratio of 50-50. So, um, yeah, they share the profits equally. So this medical practitioner received income of 450,000 Rand. The taxable deductible 
expenses of 160,000 rand were incurred. So on this taxable, on this income received, there are allowable deductions according to um, the tax act of 160,000 rand. So what we want to do is we want to determine P Majola's taxable income. Okay. So if we look at it, we've got our income, less our expenses, our allowable deduction, gives us our net profit of 290,000 Rand. Then what we need to do is we need to apportion it, this net profit, according to the profit um, ratio share, profit sharing ratio, sorry. So that, as you saw here, is a 50-50%. So the partner's pro rata taxable income is the, is the partnership net profit of 290,000 Rand. And Mr. P. Majola, share in the partnership, is 50% of this 290,000 Rand. So that means that Mr. P. Majola will be liable for tax on the above amount, even if he, if he does not receive the amount. And that is also, um, it relates back to when we did income, this amount is um, accrued to him. So that means any amount that is accrued by, received by, or in favor of that um, needs to be included in your taxable income or in your gross income. So um, this amount is accrued to Mr. P. Majola, so that's why um, we need to, that, that will be included in his taxable income calculation. Okay, so that's exactly what I just said. In terms of section, section 25H5, it says any income is deemed to be accrued to or received by on the same day as accrual or receivable. So this is irrespective of when the amount is distributed to the partners. So again, um, any amount that is accrued to or received by, that needs to be um, recorded and that forms part of your income. Okay irrespective of where you actually received this money. Okay, so what is the um, employment relationship of a partner in um, a partnership? So there's no employment relationship, relationship between the partner and the partnerships. That is be because that, ac sorry, according to COT versus Newfield, it states that um, partners, partners in a partnership um, the relationship between the, the partners is one of the agency. So it's basically a few individuals come together in forming this business. So it's not an actual um, or in forming this partnership. It's not a business or a company. It is individuals together. Okay. So the salary paid to a partner is not subject to employee's tax. The partner is subject to but um, the partner it himself is subject to provisional tax. So that means that, um, yeah, if a partnership pays a partner a salary, then this salary, um, the, the partnership will not deduct any, um, what do you call it, income, um, the partnership will not deduct any tax um, any tax on the salary. However, this partner, um, the onus is on him to um, calculate his taxable deduction on his salary, and that he needs to pay um, according to a provisional tax. So um, that means that he will need to calculate his provisional tax, I think, twice a year. And then um, on what he expects his um, income will be for the next few months. And then on that, he will need to calculate the tax on that income and pay that over to SARS. Okay. But there are some specific cases where the employee and where there do exist an employee and employer relationship between a partner and a partnership. So that is in terms of section 11F and 11L, which says that a deduction on contributions made to a pension provident or retirement fund, um, there, um, it, there, there does, you, there will be a relationship, a employee-employer relationship. 
Okay, so any contributions that the partnership the, a partnership makes on behalf of a partner to a pension provider or annuity fund in terms of Section 11F, this may be um, included as an allowable deduction and also any fringe benef benefits provided by the partnership. And this has to be included by, um, in the gross income of the partnership. So that's, for example, a travel allowance for a partner. Okay, so there are certain specific deductions and allowances um, relating to a partnership which um, you need to take note of. And the most important one, ones are any contributions to um, pension, provident or retirement annuity funds, and also any bad debts. And um, yeah, and then now this one, annuity paid to former employee or partners or their dependents in terms of Section 11M. So if a partnership makes a contribution, an annuity contribution, to any former employees or partners or dependents of former partners, then this will be an allowable deduction if um, this former employee or partner retired on the grounds of old age, ill health, or infirmity. Okay, so um, yeah, or the full contribution to an annuity for former employees or partners um, is an allowable deduction for, um, on the taxable income of the partnership. But for partners, they have to have been part of the partnership for at least five years, and um, there has to be a reasonable regard to the services rendered. So they can't, for example, be silent partners. Um, just correct this error. So this is rendered um, and not contribute to anything so um, yeah annuities paid to former partners so the first condition is that um, they had to um, this annuity should be paid if um, the partner retired due to old age your health or infirmity and this partner, he must have been part of this partnership for at least five years. And there um, has to be a reasonable regard towards services rendered. So then um, annuities relating to that may be deducted. But there's also a special deduction in terms of Section 11M for de dependents of employees, former employees or former partners. So that's only... so. Th um, these are allowable deductions, but only if the dependents depend on the on this annuity for maintenance. Okay, so you need to check whether um, yeah whether the, the, these dependents of this former employees or partners depend on this annuity for maintenance. If so, then the full amount. Um, may be deducted, will be an allowable deduction. So there's no um, limit to what the amount claimed. So looking at an example, we've got Sabisa, Fisica and Isile had been in partnership for the past 10 years and shared profit equally. So in other words, each of these partners um, shared in profits a third. Okay, so they got a, they got a third of all the profits. Isile retired as a partner on the 1st of March 2017 due to ill health. Sabisa and Fasika decided to pay an annuity of 12,000 Rand per month to Isile and we need to assume that this amount is reasonable in light of services that we rendered to the partnership and the partnership's profits. This first payment was made on the 31st of March 2017. This uh, amount was paid in addition to amount of 1.5 million paid to Isila on the 1st of March for interest in the partnership. So this is basically um, her contribution to the partnership. They paid 1.5 million rand um, for her to buy to essentially buy back her interest. Okay. 
one of the partnership employees in Sebe died. So wait, let's only start with this part and let's um, take a look at this part. So we've got this partner or this partnership, three partners. They've been in partnership for the past 10 years and they shared profit and losses equally. But now we've got one of these partners who retired um, on the 1st of March 2017 due to ill health. So um, for this partner, the partnership agreed to pay an annuity of 12,000 rand per month. And we need to assume that the amount is reasonable in light of services rendered. Okay, and um, but the partnership also paid an amount of 1.5 million to Isele for her interest in the partnership. So essentially paying, um, buying her interest in the partnership. So we look at that, the annuity to Isile. So Isile had been a partner for more than 10 years because they told us here that they've been in partnership for the past 10 years. So that's the first condition. She retired due to ill health. Remember, you need to retire due to ill health, um, old age or infirmity. Yes, so this condition is also met. So that means, um, and the annuity, the amount has to be reasonable in lots of services rendered. And they specifically told us this, that this amount is reasonable um, in lots of services rendered. So all the conditions are met. So in other words, um, yeah, we may, this annuity may um, therefore be de deducted in terms of section 11M. But there's also the 1.5 million rand paid. But this payment was um, paid to Isele for her interest or goodwill in a partnership. So this is a fixed amount. This is essentially a capital amount. So that this 1.5 million rand, because it's of a capital nature, it will, we, there will no, there will be no deduction. There's other tax consequences to to this. Um, but the annuity of 12,000 rand per month, that is an allowable deduction, um, which we may deduct from the partnership, um, from the partnership in income. Okay. So now we've had a look at Isile. Now let's look at this Nsebe. So Nsebe is an employee who died during February 2016. The partnership decided to pay an annuity of 2,000 rand per month to her husband for a five-year for a five-year period for the maintenance of the two minor children. The first payment was made on 31st of March 2016. Okay, so we've got a former employee. She died, unfortunately. Then um, the partnership agreed to pay an annuity of 2,000 rand per month to her husband. But this 2,000 rand um, relates to maintenance for her two children. Okay. So remember, for dependents, we, we may deduct annuities paid to dependents of former employees or partners given that they um, depend on this annuity for maintenance and also the former employee or partner should um, have retired on grounds of old age, ill health or infirmity. So let's see whether these conditions are met. So um, yeah, in the same way, it's a former employee of the partnership. Um, this annuity is paid to her husband but this annuity is not for her husband, it is for maintenance of her two minor children. So it's for the benefit of her children who is dependent on this maintenance. And in Sebe pass away, so that's for these reasons, um, this 2,000 Rand per month annuity will qualify as a deduction in terms of Section 11M. Okay. So yeah, you just need to go through these conditions and see whether they are met and um, to determine whether annuities paid to former employees or partners or the dependents are allowable deductions. Okay, so the next deduction is the partnership contribution made to a fund. So when a partnership 
makes a contribution to a pension provident or retirement, retirement annuity fund. In terms of Section 11L, this is an allowed reduction, but there are certain conditions. So, um, when an employer makes a contribution to a pension provident or retirement fund, so in this case the employer is the partnership, for the benefit of one of its employees, then the partnership or employer may claim a deduction of the amount contributed. So the partnership may claim the full amount contributed on behalf of the employee in terms of a pension provident or retirement fund. So this includes contributions made to former employees or dependents of deceased employees. So partnership contribution made to a pension provident um, or retirement annuity fund for the benefit of a partner may claim as a, as a deduction may claim a deduction of the amount contributed. Okay. So basically, when a partnership makes a contribution to an employee or a partner, then this full contribution made to, to this employee or partner is deductible. The full amount, uh, we may claim the full deduction um, of the amount contributed. Now, this is also for former employees and former partners or dependents of deceased employees or deceased partners. So very importantly, what you just need to note here is when a partnership makes this contribution. So contrary to that, we've got partners making a contribution to their fund. This is in terms of Section 11F. So when an individual partner makes a contribution to a um, retirement pension, retirement annuity pension or provident fund, then the amount deductible in the year of assessment should be the lesser of. So now you need to know these three um, conditions. So it should be the lesser of either 350,000 Rand or the taxable income before this deduction and in notion tax. So we the taxable deduction before we made this contribution or 27.5% of the higher of the person's taxable income before this deduction or the remuneration received. So re remuneration is the salary which this partner received and any bonuses or fringe benefits um, which this partner receives. Okay, so whenever um, one of these are the least, that is the total limit of what um, the partner's contribution may claim as a deduction. Okay, so let's look at an example. We've got Cabello, he's a partner in a partnership. So during the 2018 year of assessment, he received a salary of 860,000 Rand from the partnership. So that's his remuneration. His share of the partnership profit for the year was 500,000 Rand. So, um, yeah, he from the total net profit, he received 500,000 Rand um, from that profit. During the, year of, during the year, he sold an investment property and realized a taxable capital gain of 300,000 Rand. So, um, yeah, that's just a gain which he made on uh, the sale of an asset, in this case, an investment property. Um, and that relates to capital gains tax, which we'll do at a later stage. So, C Cabello. He contributed 12% of his salary from the partnership to a retirement annuity fund. Now, what we want to do is we want to calculate the amount of Cabello's contribution to, re to the retirement annuity fund that he may claim as a deduction. Okay, so importantly, this is Cabello. Cabello is a partner in a partnership. This is his individual contribution. So when a partner makes a contribution to a pension retirement or retirement annuity or provident fund, then um, we need to calculate the amount deductible, which is the lesser between these amounts. So let's have a look. So what was the contribution made to retirement annuity? So um, thousands, 12 percent of his salary. His salary was 860,000 Rand, multiplied by 12 percent. So the total contribution which Cabello made to his retirement annuity fund was 103,200. 
Now what we need to do is we need to calculate the deduction, the, the deduction portion of the contribution calculated um, above. So what is the what is Cabello's um, remuneration? So we paid him a salary of 860,000 rand. What is his taxable income? It's his salary of 860,000 rand plus his share of the profits of 500,000 rand plus the taxable capital gain of 300,000 rand. Again, we'll deal with tax or capital gain at a later stage, but just take note that you need to add um, your capital gain to the to your income. Okay, that then gives your taxable income of 1.66 million. So from this, we now want to calculate um, what amount we may deduct as a contribution. So um, Okay, so looking at, we want to look at what is the, okay, so what is the lesser of 350,000 Rand or 27.5% of the higher of his remuneration? So it's um, re, here's re, remuneration and taxable income. So 27.5% of that, of this 1.7 million. Sorry, I'm at the wrong question. Um, it's here. So his remunerated and taxable income, 27.5% of this 1.6 million is then 456,500. Or um, his taxable income before this deduction. So his taxable income before reduction is any salary or profits uh, made gives you 1.3 million. Why this taxable capital gain is not included in your um, taxable income before the deduction is because just in how you calculate taxable income. Your capital gain, which we'll also do at a later stage, we need to add at a later stage because always your income, less your deductions, plus um, any capital gain. That's in a nutshell um, how you do it. Okay, so we need to now determine what is the lesser between 350,000 Rand or 27.5% of the higher of the remuneration, which we calculate as 456,000 Rand, or the taxable income before the de deduction. So, in other words, the lesser of these amounts is the 350,000 Rand. So, um, since Cabello's contribution to the retirement annuity is less than 350,000 Rand, she may claim the full 103,000 Rand 200 as a deduction. So, if, for example, her contribution was 360,000 Rand, then she'll be only then she'll be limited to, to only claim 350,000 Rand. Okay, so, so you just need to take note of that. Okay, so now looking, taking this question and just adding to this, um, we, we had Cabello making a contribution of 12% from of his salary, but now we want to expand this um, question to include the partnership making a contribution to a, a retirement annuity of 12% of Cabello's salary. So now we have um, Cabello's, Cabello's contribution and the partnership contribution of 12%. So everything else remains the same. Okay, and then just take note that the full am amount contributed by the partnership qualifies as a taxable fringe benefit in Cabello's hands. So with fringe benefits, you need to add that back um, to your taxable income. Okay, and also uh, assume that the remainder of the facts in the previous example remain the same. So what was the contribution? So the contribution remained to retirement annuity was Cabello's contribution of 12% of her salary plus the partnership contribution as a fringe benefit um, of 12% of Cabello's salary. So in total, the contribution made to 
this retirement annuity is 206,400. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to calculate the remuneration of Cabello. So it's a salary of 860,000 rand plus then the partnership's contribution to the um, retirement annuity, which is a fringe benefit. So whenever you have a fringe benefit, you need to add that to your taxable income or your remuneration. So that gives you then a total remuneration for Cabello of 963,200. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to calculate the taxable income for Cabello. So the salary, which you, which you received of 860,000 Rand, fringe benefit of 103,000 Rand 200, which is the partnership's contribution, partnership profit of 500,000 Rand, and a taxable capital gain of 300,000 Rand. Gives you a taxable income of 1.7, um, million sixty three thousand two hundred. Okay. Now, after that, we need to de now determine what is the lesser of either three hundred fifty thousand rand or the higher of twenty seven and a half percent of the remuneration and taxable income. So re we've got here the, the remuneration, which is the salary and the taxable income, which is the fringe benefit, the partnership profit and um, capital gain. So 27.5% of that is 484,880. Or the um, person's taxable income before we add this contribution. So the only thing to note here is this capital gain, we um, should not add to this because um, Remember, when you calculate your taxable income or your tax payable, it's always your income, your gross income, less any deductions, plus um, any capital gains. So in this case, we've got our taxable income, which is a salary, the fringe benefit, and the partnership profit. And we want to calculate um, this amount before this um retirement annuity contribution. So the amount before the retirement annuity contribution is then 1.4 million 63,200. So what is the lesser between 350,000 Rand or 484,880 which is 27 and a half percent higher of the remuneration and taxable income or the taxable um, income before the contribution? which um, we calculate as 1.4 million, 63,200. So again, the less amount is 350,000 Rand. So um, Cabela's contribution of 206,400 is less than 350,000 Rand, so the full amount of 206,000 um, may be deducted. Okay. So you just need to know these conditions and you need to be able to apply this. So that's when a partner makes a contribution to a fund and when a, or when a partnership makes a contribution to a fund. So just go through that. Okay, now a few other deductions important to a partnership is a key person insurance contribution. So that is, um, for example, a insurance policy on the life of a key person of a business. So if this key person had to die or leave or anything of that, um, any contributions made to that may be deducted. So we may deduct any premiums payable under a key individual policy of which the taxpayer is the policy holder. Okay, so the taxpayer in this case is the partner. Okay, so what are the requirements for this to be an allowable deduction? So this contributions, this insurance contribution, must relate to the death, disability, or illness of an employer or director of the taxpayer. Now, if a partnership takes out takes out a KI policy on employees, the premium paid will qualify for a deduction. So partnership, so, so partners of partnerships are not employees or directors of partners, meaning that may that they may not deduct the pre premiums payable if a policy on a partner as a key 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 individual. 
So the reason for this is the expenditure um, relates to, to a capital nature. So in other words, so in terms of section 11W, any premiums paid on a key individual policy for any, individ for any employee will qualify as a deduction. But any um, contributions made on behalf of partners of a partnership may not be will not qualify as an allowable deduction as this expenditure relates to a capital nature because it um, because it dealt with a bit later when we calculate the individual taxable income for the partner. Okay. So you just need to take note of that. Now capital allowances, remember that's what we did um, previously. So any property of a partner does not belong to the of the partnership does not belong to the partnership because a partnership is a not a le not a legal entity. So the partner or the property belongs jointly to the individual partners who are co-owners. So for example, a delivery vehicle um or let's rather make it a manufacturing asset that needs to be that will be a deduction on whoever or whichever partners own this um, manufacturing asset so the capital allowance must be apportioned between the partners owing this asset okay and that's also in terms of section 12c and 12e so that what that's what you need to remember from previous knowledge Okay, and then motor vehicle expenses. You may claim vehicle expenses based on actual cost incurred on vehicle and actual distance traveled for business. But very importantly, you have to retain adequate records. So there has to be a logbook of um, how many kilometers were driven for business purposes and what was um, driven for personal purposes. Or when you put in fuel, you have to keep the receipts. You may not claim anything if you don't have um, a receipt to back it up or your logbook or anything like that. So your expenses, your motor vehicle expenses, these are allowable deductions. Um, but the deduction is only on actual costs incurred by a partner if the partner owns a vehicle, the vehicle. So to explain that, let's look at example 4.5. So we've got Mabhuti, who is a partner in a partnership, and she's 40% of the profits and losses of the partnership. On the 1st of March, Mabhuti purchased a motor vehicle in terms of an installment credit agreement. The cash purchase price of the vehicle was 273600 Mabhuti incurred interest of 29780 during the period between the 1st of March and the 28th of February. Okay. So um, we've got this vehicle which we bought for 273,600 and the interest on um, what we need to pay back in terms of this credit agreement was 29,718 for this year of assessment. Um, the passenger cars are written off for tax purposes are over a five year period in terms of interpretation note. 47. So that relates to your wear and tear, which is section 11E. So the total cost of maintenance, insurance, and fuel for the for this vehicle was 80,000 rand. Mabuti paid for all these expenses. The vehicle was used by Mabuti for both business and private use. He kept a logbook of his business and private kilometers traveled during the year. So in total, he traveled 25 km, 25,000 kilometers for business and 16,000 um, kilometers for private purposes. The partner's income and expenditure for the period, um, the partnership income and expenses for the period of 1st of March to 20th of February 2017 were as follow. So we've got the gross profit from trading, which was um, 3 million Rand. Then what we have is The expenses, so the expenses are your general expenses of 1.6 million, and they told you that all of these expenses are deductible. We've got the salary paid to Mabuti, 
and a salary paid to other partners. So in total, the net profit for this partnership was 540,000 Rand. So what we need to do is we need to calculate of this 540,000 Rand, what relates to um, Mabuti's share in this profits. So remember he earns 40% or he shares 40% of the profits and losses. Okay. So what is the taxable income of Mabuti? So first, we need to calculate the partner, the partner. So Mabuti's taxable income. So the taxable income from the partnership is five hundred forty thousand rand. What is um, Mabuti's pro rata taxable income from the partnership? So what is his share in the profits? It's 40 percent of the taxable income of the partnership. So that means that Mabuti shares two hundred sixteen thousand rand of this partnership. He received a salary of 280,000 Rand. And now we may claim um, this motor vehicle deduction for Mabuti, but this um, deduction may only relate to business kilometers. So um, traveling specifically for business purposes. You may not claim private um, use. So um, calculate the business component of the vehicle use. We need to, firstly, what is the capital allowance? So capital allowance, in terms of Section 11E, which is wear and tear, and um, interpretation note 47, which says that motor vehicles are, deducti are deductible over a five-year period. So that's why we say the total cost of 273,600, sorry, Divide by five years gives you then a capital allowance of 54,720, which is deductible. Then we've got insurance and fuel. Our total costs they gave us as 80,000 Rand. And then we also have the interest incurred on the vehicle. So this is on the um, on paying back our on paying back the vehicle, the interest on that vehicle was 29,780. So of this total cost, which is then 164,000 Rand, what related to business purposes? They told us that 25,000 um, kilometers was for business purposes. So we need to multiply this 160,000 Rand by 25,000 divided by the total kilometers driven. So that's 25, which is the business, plus the 16, which is the private kilometers. So that means that the allowable motor vehicle deduction is then 100,305. So the taxable income for Mr. Um, what's his name? Mabhuti is 395,695. Okay. Okay. And then finally, another um, deduction specifically related to partnerships is allowance for bad debts. So if you create a, an, an allowance, um, in terms of Section 11I for bad debts, this is an allowable deduction um, but yeah, so this is an allowable deduction. So this allowance is for what we expect our debtors will not pay back um, to us our money. So then we create an allowance on the expectation of what we think um, these debtors will not pay back. And this is a deduction in terms of Section 11i. But very importantly is this allowance first needs to be included in your gross income during the current or previous year of assessment. If it's not included, then you may not um, deduct it as a deduction. So the partnerships, its debts are proportioned among the partners if incurred specific, um, if included in specific partners' gross income. Okay, so if the partnership has um, this bad debts, then it needs to be apportioned a among the partners. Okay. Okay, so these are all your deductions which you may get, which which you may find. The most important ones are the contributions made to any um, provident 
pension or retirement annuity, any contribution made to a medical aid scheme, um, this bad debts, allowance for bad debts, and any annuities um, or capital allowances, those are all your most important ones. But you need to go through all of them and you need to understand all of them. Okay, a final topic on partnerships is when we terminate a partnership agreement or when a partnership agreement is dissolved. So a partnership agreement is dissolved during the year of assessment if the partnership ceases to trade or when one of his partners passes away or retires or when we, um, you know, when we just have a new partner um, to this partnership, then um, we need then the old partnership agreement has to be dissolved and a new partnership agreement needs to be entered into because um, yeah if you have now less partners then we need to calculate what uh, the new profit sharing ratio is or when we have an additional partner what is his share in this partnership so all of this we need to um, determine a new partnership agreement because a partnership the relationship between partners is one of our agency meaning that we've got our individual partners and they uh, well we've got our partnership and the individual partners share the profit and losses of this partnership individually okay so when one of these when the partnership agreement is dissolved or terminated, then a new agreement needs to be set up. And um, we need to update all our accounts um, to the date of the dissolution and each partner share in the profit or losses from the start of the year of assessment to dissolution must be taken into account in order to determine a taxable income for the year of assessment. So there are two types of payments to be made to former partners, so payment for the share and profit and losses earned up to the date of dissolution, and a lump sum pa um, payment paid um, on the profits earned up until the date of dissolution, dissolution. or a payment for dissolve, disposal of right to share in profits. So any of these needs to um, determine determines a new partnership agreement and um, there are certain conditions to that. Okay, so just looking at the example in your study guide, so we've got Joseph, Mulani and Judah in Tulsoni who carries on a business in a partnership and they paid the following expenses. The partnership paid the following expenses. So for Joseph it paid a salary of 240,000 rand the interest on a positive capital account for Judah was 31,000 Rand and a partnership profit before these expenses was 640,000 Rand. Joseph and Judah shares profit and losses in a ratio of 60-40 and they are both younger than 65 years of age. So what do we want to do is we want to calculate the um, profit that we may distribute to each of these partners and their taxable income. So first what we need to do is we need to calculate the partnership profit. So what is the profit? It's a profit before the expenses which was 640,000 rand, less our expenses which was the salary for Joseph of 240,000 rand, less the interest on a capital account for Judah which was 31,000 rand. So that means the net profit of this partnership was 369,000 rand. Dividing this into um, Joseph and Judah at a ratio of 60 to 40 percent. So Joseph shares 60 percent of this 369,000 Rand and Judah 40 percent. Okay, and what are the other um, contributions or deductions to each of these partners? So Joseph received a salary of 240,000 Rand. Judah received um, interest on a capital account of 31,000 Rand. But remember, with any interest received, you need to include it in your gross income, and then you may exclude any exemptions. And exemptions 
are 23,000 Rand 800 if um, this individual is younger than 65 years of age. So that means of this 31,000 Rand interest, um, 23,000 Rand 800 is exempt. So the taxable income for Joseph, taking all of this into account, is 461,400, and for Judah, is 154,800. Okay, so that's just um, broadly going through um, the sharing of the profits for each individual partner. So taking all of that into account, let's look at this comprehensive. Um, okay, let's look at this. We've got Paul, who's age 34, and Ibrahim, age 65, started Solmac Electronics on the 1st of March 2009. As a partnership when they each contributed a hundred thousand rand to watch this partnership. Ibrahim retired as a partner on 20th of February 2017. One of Solmac Electronics employees, Ashwin, age 36, acquired Ibrahim's interest in the partnership on 1st of March for 400,000 rand. This amount was made up um, of 100,000 Rand of Ibrahim's partnership contribution and 300,000 Rand for Ibrahim's interest in the partnership assets. Paul and Ashen share equally in the profit and losses of the partnership. The income expenses of the partnership for the year ended on 20th of February 2018 were as follows. Income. The gross income from trading operations was 2.8 million 30,000. Interest received on credit balance, 60,000 Rand, and dividends, the partner's own share, um, own share in Ele Electron PTY Limited of 260,000 Rand. What were our expenses? Salary paid to employees is four employees. Each of them earned a salary of 144,000 Rand. So the total salary paid to employees is 432,000 Rand. Then we've got the um, Unemployment Insurance Fund contribution and Skills Development Levies in respect of these employees' salaries, which amount to 8,640. Then salaries paid to partners, 800,000 rand to each partner, so giving a total of 1.6 million. So the contributions made to employees' pension fund is 8% of their salary. So that amounts to 34,560. Contributions made to partners pension fund, to, um, which is also 8% of the salary. So that's 128,000 Rand. Short term insurance premium of 68,000 Rand. Life insurance premiums on life partners, 12,000 Rand. The depreciation on office furniture. So we've got the depreciation. We purchased furniture on the 1st of March 2016 for 75,000 Rand. This furniture is um, depreciable over four years for accounting purposes. So this four years is what this partnership um, depreciates their office furniture. But in terms of interpretation note 47 of the Tax Act, which lists certain um, write-off periods for assets, they state that office furniture should be written off over a six-year period. Okay, so that will be important when we calculate the whale term deduction. But um, this partnership had depreciation of 18,750, which is a 75,000 Rand, less this four years, because that's according to their accounting purposes, depreciation, how they write off um, furniture. Okay, and then interest paid in respect of the partner's capital contribution. So Paul and Ashwin each made a hundred thousand in contribution on first of March and first of March two thousand seventeen, respectively. Interest paid on this contribution are calculated at the end of the year at a rate of twelve percent per annum. So that's then a hundred thousand rand multiplied by twelve percent multiplied for Paul and Ashwin, giving you twenty four thousand rand. So the net profit for this partnership was 824,000 Rand and 50 
brand. So additional inf information specifically related to Ashwin because we only want to calculate the taxable income for Ashwin. Ashwin. So he contributed 8% of his monthly salary from the, from the partnership to the partnership's pension fund in addition to the partnership contribution. Okay, so we've got the partnership contribute, contributing towards a pension fund for the partner. But in, to, in addition to this, um, Ashwin also contributed 8% of his salary. He also contributed 1,680 Rand per month to a retirement annuity fund. And he made a 1,850 Rand contribution to a medical aid scheme, of which he is the owning dependent. Okay, and then he received 36,000 Rand net rental income during 2018. So as I said, we want to calculate taxable income for Ashwin. So if we look at it, what we need to do is we've got this tax, this net profit of the partnership, but we need to adjust it for any income expenses um, according to the special rules in the individual partner's hand. So the net profit per statement of comprehensive income is this 824,050, which we calculated here for income initial expenses. Plus, we need to add back the life insurance premiums on the lives of the partners of 12,000 Rand. So that's, you remember, the KI insurance. So these expenses is of a capital nature and therefore not a deductible. Okay. So remember, we did that here. And then let me just find that. So key person insurance contribution. So partners contribution. Um, of or a partnership contribution to partners in terms of a key individual um, person insurance contribution. You may not deduct the premiums payable if the policy on a partner is as a KI because this expenditure is of a capital nature. Okay. But if this um, contribution was to normal employees, then that will then be an allowable deduction. Okay, so we're going to add that back. And now we're going to add back the excess wear and tear. So remember, we calculate the depreciation according to our accounting purposes of 18,750. So that's the 75,000 divided by four years. But now, in terms of section 11E, which is read with interpretation note 47, it allows a deduction for office furniture over a six-year write-off period. So we need to calculate what this write-off period is, or what this write-off amount is. So it's 75,000 divided by six years gives you then 12,500. So the 6,250 Rand is more than what it should be. So that's why we can add um, this excess wear and tear of 6,240 250,000, 250 rand, because it should actually be only be um, this 12,500, but we calculated as 18,740. So that's why we can add back this excess um, wear and tear. So the total um, taxable income after making these adjustments is 842,300. Now this we now need to contribute according to Ashwin's share in the partnership. So remember he shares 50%. So 50% of this 842,300 is in 421,150. Okay, so that's what he received out of this partnership. But he also received um, certain personal income from the partnership. So that was his salary from the partnership of 800,000 Rand. The interest received from the partnership, so remember his contribution is 100,000 Rand. And on this contribution, um, the actual will receive 12% interest on his 100,000 Rand contribution. So that means um, we can add this 12,000 Rand to his taxable income. 
then um, the contributions made to the pension fund by the partnership. So when a partnership makes a contribution to a pension to a pension to a pension fund on behalf of a partner, then that is a fringe benefit. So this we can add back to our income. So um, the partnership made an eight percent contribution on the salary of um, the partner of Ashwin. So in other words, sixty-four thousand rand. Um, yeah, so that's what I said is when a partnership makes a contribution to a partner, to a fund, um, then this contribution is a fringe benefit to the partner. Okay. And then this partner also received net rent income of 36,000 Rand. So his total income is in 1,333,000 Rand and 150 Rand. Okay, now we need to claim the exemptions and deductions per partner. So um, Ashwin, he is 36 years old. If I'm correct, yeah, he's 36 years old. So that means he um, he qualifies for an interest exemption in terms of section 101i of 23,800. Okay, let's just look at note number three. So Ashwin received the foreign interest amount, so interest from his partnership capital contribution. So that was 12,000 Rand, they gave you that. And the interest um, interest on a partnership's um, capital account. Which is then Sorry, on the partnership bank account. So the partnership had a 60,000 Rand positive bank account or received interest of 60,000 Rand and Ashwin shares 50% in this share, so that's 30,000 Rand. So the total interest which he receives is 42,000 Rand, but this 42,000 Rand is limited to. Um, an interest exemption of 23,800. Okay, looking at dividends, terms of section 10, 1K. So included in actual say in the taxable income is a dividend of 130,000 Rand because remember the partnership owns um, 265 or received 260,000 Rand in dividends of which of which um, Ashwin shares 50% in this. So that means that Ashwin will then um, receive 100 or is entitled to 130,000 Rand of these dividends. But um, in terms of section 10 1KI, any SA dividends is an allowable exemption. So that's why we may deduct the full dividend received <coughs> by Ashwin. So that gives you then a taxable income before the specific deductions of 1.1 million um, Okay, now we need to calculate the contributions to the pension fund and or and retirement annuity made by Ashwin personally. So looking at note six, Ashwin contributed to a pension and re retirement annuity, but this is um, this deduction is limited in terms of section 11F to the lowest of 350,000 Rand or 27 and a half percent of the higher of his taxable income before this deduction. So that we calculate as is 1.1 million seven seventy nine thousand three hundred fifty or his remuneration which is his salary of eight eight hundred thousand rand and a twenty thousand rand fringe benefit so that's um twenty seven and a half percent of that is then three hundred and twenty 
324,321. Um, okay, so or it is um, the lower of his taxable income. So the lowest here is 350,000 Rand, but Ashwin, his total contributions to his retirement or to his pension fund was then his 64,000 Rand, his own contribution, because that's the 8% of his salary, plus then 20,000 and 20,116, which is his contribution to his retirement annuity, because it's the 1,680 1, multiplied by 12 gives you that 20,000. Oh. And then you also receive the partnership contribution of 64,000 Rand. So the total contribution made to a pension fund, retirement annuity, or provident fund was 148,000 Rand. So this amount is less than the lesser of these amounts of 324,000 Rand. So in other words, this full amount we may deduct as a deduction. Okay, so this contribution, this full amount we may deduct um, from our taxable income. So that then gives us our taxable income of 1,031,190 Rand. Okay, and then finally, what you need to do is you need to calculate your taxable income according to the tax tables. Any rebates, so Ashwin um, qualifies for primary rebate, and then also you've got your medical um, fee, medical scheme fees tax credit. So Ashwin is the only dependent, so that means that you may deduct um, 303 Rand per month um, for the medical scheme fees tax credit. So that means total of 3,636 Rand. Okay. Okay, so just go through this, go through everything that we went through and um, go through the South African, the SOAP, your SOAP book, chapter. 18 and just understand partnership so the only the main thing to remember about a partnership is that a partnership is not a company itself it's basically just individual partners um, who contributed together in an agreement in a partnership agreement so in calculate in calculating the tax um, consequences for a partnership what you need to do is you first need to calculate the net profit of the partnership, which is your income less expenses. You need to adjust this net profit to any allowable deductions or income um, according to partnerships. So that's what we went through now. And then you get your taxable income of the partnership. So this taxable income then needs to be distribu distributed according to the profit ratio share of each partner. And then for each partner, you need to calculate his um, taxable income by including all income that he receives, so his salary and contributions made, and then allowable deductions. So that's your pension fund deductions or, and all of that. That then gives you your taxable income. Okay, so please go through this and, yeah, make sure you understand partnerships. And also sole proprietors. Sole proprietors are very much similar to what we did for individuals. Um, it is knowledge that you should know by now. So that's why I didn't, that's why we don't focus on that. But um, you will, in a test or exam, you will have to go through um everything on a sole proprietor as well. Okay, so that is it. I will provide some questions to which you can go through. So please work through them and make sure that you understand them.
and make sure that you understand partnership. Okay, cool.